Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fitrix Chat. My name is Amanda Quinn. And my name is Laura Jackson. And on today's podcast, we are talking specifically about falling back into routine. Dun, dun, dun. Summer is ending at this time of year, um, at, least, at least for where we are in the world. I know that for other people, it may just be getting started. But um, for us, we are starting to get back into fall, which usually means that people are starting to get back into like, okay, I realized that over the summer, maybe things went a little bit sideways. Maybe it's, you know, time to reintroduce myself back into a bit of a routine when, you know, if you have little ones or things like that, they're going back to school, you're going back to like regular work brain mode and, you know, summer vacations, we've crammed them all in. And now we're like, okay, time to get into routine, time to get back into like this mindfulness of this. And well, I literally just wrote, um, an email to our list about this too, that, right. Um, which is funny because it's almost like, and, and this is whether you are, you know, you're listening to this podcast for yourself or you're a coach. I always feel like after Labor Day, it's almost like the new, one of the new years. It is. It's like the second new year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, if you are already, if you're coaching, right, you might be thinking, Hey, this summer was kind of slow with clients or a lot of your clients took a break. And then Mm. typically it's not the first week after Labor Day. It is typically the second week when everyone's like, oh my gosh, I need you. You Sign me back up. What programs (laughs) do you have? What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of like this space where, like you were saying, like I consider it as like the second new year. (laughs) Yeah, I actually, it's so interesting because even over the summer when we were offering our summer fast track certifications, I was saying to people that exact thing that, you know, if you get certified and you can get through this certification throughout the summer, you can have your business up and running for the fall because that is truly like the time when people have this moment of like, uh uh-oh, like I, you know, it's time for me to get back into routine and I really need some support in that. Yeah. And so it, it really is that kind of same feeling just without the word resolution added to it. <laughs> that's really exactly. It. And I also feel like, you know, that's a thing with, with life and with fitness and health, you know, we always obviously promote that you create a lifestyle that will work with no matter what is going on in your life and every single season, but mm-hmm. just like there is spring, summer and fall and winter, like some seasons we other things are a priority other than our health and fitness. It doesn't mean that we aren't still active in it, but it's almost as if in the fall is when we get really refocused on it and it becomes, it bumps its way up to the top of the list. So yeah, I always think that this is where too, as a, whether this is for yourself and you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm committed. Um, we also have just to let you guys know, we have our fit chicks challenge, which is a 28 day challenge. You go to fitchicks.com forward slash challenge. If you want to do your own challenge, um, it's a really great challenge, fitness, nutrition mindset for 28 days to really kickstart you back in. Or if you're a coach, this too is where, you know, you've got to get that plan of attack and make sure that you're supporting your clients because they are ready for it. Agreed. Agreed. And so these are just a couple of the things that when you're thinking about it, what, like you said, either from your own perspective or from a coaching perspective that we recommend looking at when you're trying to fall back into routine, that's my pun for the day. Um, so the first thing is you're welcome, everyone. Um, so the first thing is, I think it's really important to take a step back and look at what was working before in the past and what maybe wasn't working so well for you. I think that this is actually a really good starting point. Again, if you're like doing this kickstart, because so many times we want to just like jump back in and be like, okay, you know, before I was running 10 K and I was eating this and I was eating this, I'm just going to do the same thing. But maybe before you jump back into it, take a step back and go analyze what was I doing? What felt good? What maybe didn't feel like it was working? What maybe felt like it was more work than needed? What maybe felt like it was a lot of effort with not a lot of results or just didn't feel like it matched my needs, my goals, whatever it was. And then what could you adapt and change? What could you keep? And then what could you leave behind? And I think that that's just such a great step, a great first step. I, and this is the thing I actually just had this conversation with Dr. Cheryl, who's one of our instructors on our holistic nutrition weight loss coach certification. One Mm -hmm. of our students had sent in a question about, um, her thyroid health. So she had recently found out she had a thyroid issue and, you know, she was trying something that was against the quote unquote, what she should do for nutrition. And you guys have heard me all the time saying about nutrition 
and fitness, there is no one size fits all, right? There's kind of the foundational pieces, but then you really have to tie it into yourself or your client. So anyways, we were talking about this and, you know, she was saying, I'm following these, this certain, um, eating these certain foods that aren't in line with quote unquote, what I should be doing. And Dr. Cheryl was saying too, cause I'm not an expert in this thyroid condition. So I reached out to her and she was saying, you know, basically if you're feeling good and obviously if you are looking at different markers in your body and those are still in line, like blood sugar and things like that, then stick to it. Right. There's so many times that we don't do things that actually feel good for our bodies or that we feel good doing because we think we should be doing something different. And that right. is where most of us have this, you know, really kind of stop and start or negative relationship with fitness and health is because we feel like we should be doing something different, even though what we are doing feels good for us. So it's really, you've got to tie in that, like that self-awareness and everything starts yeah. with self-awareness. Right. And even for me, you know, I used to run a lot before having my son and mm -hmm. I loved running outside. I don't like running on a treadmill. I loved running outside because I'd listen to a podcast. I'd be out in the fresh air and I don't run anymore because my pelvic floor has been like on and off. Yeah. But it's, that's the whole thing that used to work for me. I could still battle through and run because also my body likes running. It gets me really great results, but then I would be again, potentially da damaging my pelvic floor even more. So I've kind of left that in my past and I've rejigged what I do. So my cardio is different, more stationary biking, rowing, swimming, that kind of thing, as opposed to, and I still lift heavy weights as opposed to running. So it's just really yeah. like looking at your lifestyle and what feels good for you. And again, what against what you should or should not be doing. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, I think it's just like the first step that I think everyone should take especially if you're reigniting your health and fitness routine, right? It's a really great, and even if you're not reigniting it and you've been doing something for six months or a year, just take a, take a moment and just really reflect and see what can I change? What can I adapt? What can I grow? What can I leave behind? Now, the second thing is um, that you have, basically, if you want to fall back into routine, I want you to think about your fitness commitment. I want you to make a commitment to yourself to move daily with your workouts and with me and be more aware of movement throughout the day. So this is not saying like you have to do an hour workout every single day, or you have to do this again, look at like what works for you and create a plan, but a movement plan is more what I'm talking about. Less about like the workouts in the gym and everything else, but more of a movement plan of, okay, if I'm looking to fall back into routine and get moving again, how can I make small changes to add more movement to my everyday? Is it instead of driving to the grocery store when I have to pick up eggs, I'm going to just walk there? Or is it that I'm going to, you know, be more consciously aware of the fact that I'm working all day. And so at my lunch hour, I'm going to go for a 20 minute walk and then, you know, eat my lunch quickly or whatever it is, but it's just figuring out how you can manage to make movement a priority, not necessarily the workouts, but daily movement. Because I think that that's like the daily movement piece. And we've talked about this on the podcast when we talk about NEAT and things like that, but daily movement is the game changer because that's the piece where it's not just about the 20 minutes or an hour in the gym, whatever, however long your workouts are. It's actually about the things that you're doing outside of the gym that really, really matter. We have to move our bodies. There, there recently was, um, I haven't watched it, but I watched the trailer for it and I've seen stuff around it. There's a documentary on Netflix that's all around um, this guy who studied different areas where people live to be 100 and what they're doing differently. And not just living to be 100. This is the thing. There's a very difference between your body being alive and your body thriving till it's 100, right? Yes. And one of the major things is that, that all of these people prioritize movement every single day. And that is their walking places, they're swimming, they're dancing, they're doing groceries. It has, just, we've just become such a sedentary society. Like it is so normal to sit all day long that I think that the first shift has to be in a mindset shift of, because, you know, we talked about this on the podcast before, like I am a person who moves every single day. That's who I am. Not even saying I'm a fit person or I'm a fitness person or I'm a workout person. I move my body every day. It is ingrained in who I am because I've done it for so long. It wasn't always like that, right? Correct. But it's getting that mindset shift of I'm a person who moves and then deciding, 
Like don't, this is the biggest piece of advice I can always give to my clients, my students. You've got to make decisions and you've got to make them in advance. You've got to mm-hmm. decide what days you're doing. What are your movement things that you do outside? So for example, every time you go to the grocery store, do you walk there? That's your decision. Decide when I, you know, I always go for a walk after dinner. If you have access to a pool, I always swim for 20 minutes, you know, in between whatever it is, just thinking about making a decision for it, because the worst thing ever for anyone who has not yet created that habit is to leave it up to chance in the moment. Because what will yeah. happen is you'll be at the end of the day and you'll be like, wait a second, I sat in a chair all day long and I didn't even realize it, mm-hmm. right? So it's making that decision and starting thinking about where can you commit daily to more movement? Where can you become a person who instead of on your lunch break sits and eats lunch, maybe you eat your lunch in a shorter frame of time and then you go and move after that. So just make that commitment to yourself and make that, it's not even commitment, make that decision. Yeah. Because everything has to start with a decision right? That's where change, change starts with awareness. Then the next piece is a decision. And if we don't make a decision for ourselves, we're going to keep going back to old habits. It's just the way we're built. Definitely. And I think one of the things I just want to add to that too, is just create a plan that eases you back into it as well. So if you're, if you're someone who, you know, if you've taken the summer or if you've taken, if you're just starting out on your journey, wherever you're at, but if you feel like, okay, this is like, I'm at like, point zero. And I'm starting to build again, get back into my healthy habits, ease your way back into it. It doesn't have to be like, Oh, I move my body for two hours every day, or I do 10,000 steps a day or things like that. It could be, I do 1000 steps. I walk to the mailbox every day and, you know, and I, or I dance for 20 minutes (laughs) throughout my day or whatever it is, but just ease your way into it. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming thing, but you have to consider movement every single day. And you have to decide this is going to be a part of your life moving forward. Exactly. And you know, it's, you know, it's fascinating too. And I'm just going to add to this for all my trainers out there. I going to give you some total like props for what we do, because you really change someone's life when you create a lifestyle of movement, right? When you help them create a lifestyle that it is who they become. And that is the foundations of what we teach at Fit Chicks Academy is always that your clients should want to fire you at the end. Like that is kind of our motto. It's like, you have empowered them and have taught them and created such a sustainable lifestyle for them that they don't need you anymore. That is the goal that they're going to fire you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know even for, um, but also what you're giving people is you're giving them like a key to their health for the long term. And like, we have a friend who, um, I love her to death and she, for years now has been talking to me about her weight and her struggle. And she's like, I just don't understand why I cannot commit. Like, why can I not get into it? And she's been trying to do all these programs on her own and trying to, you know, do use a pedometer and then trying to follow, um, you know, a downloadable workout and all these things. She finally has hired a trainer that she sees three times a week. Yes. It's a financial investment, but she is finally feeling committed and supported. It's what she needed. So don't beat yourself up if you're trying these things and it's not working for you, right? You're trying, you're like, I can't get, I've decided, but I can't get committed. If that's the case, please, please, please go and hire a coach or a trainer. Yeah. Um, now going back to like falling back into routine, I think the third thing that we have to talk about is like the nutrition side. The nutrition side is really just looking at, you know, what you were doing, maybe especially over the summer, (laughs) sometimes in the summertime, again, we think of the summer. I think a lot of times we consider the summer almost like the way we consider weekends, which a lot of people consider weekends to be like this free for all this mentality. And I think, and Laura, you can talk to this, but I think it's going to the idea of, you know, every day should still be a commitment towards your health. And we should still be focused on eating nutrient, uh, nutritionally dense foods. So just because it's Saturday or because it's July 15th, it doesn't really make, it shouldn't really necessarily skew how you eat. The only things that should really change in my opinion are the foods that you're eating. We should be looking at eating foods that are in season because they're fresher, they're tastier, they're cheaper. Um, we should be looking at recipes that match kind of the seasons because we do crave different foods during different seasons. So, you know, going into the fall, you're going to look for things that are more comfort foods, warming foods, 
And in the summer, we're looking at lighter foods, usually cooler foods, things like that. It's just sort of how our body reacts to different seasons. But um, I definitely think that from the nutrition side, it's really about adapting a new mindset around nutrition and saying, okay, eliminating the idea of it being like, because it's this, I eat this way. And instead just thinking of it as what is the plan that I can use moving forward that I can then adapt and use for my lifestyle, as opposed to just for short-term fixes. Yeah. And I just, again, I sent out, um, if you're not on our email list, please go to fitchacademy.com. Um, you can sign up to our email list from there, but I was just sending out about even, um, it was a little nutrition lesson because it's on this whole topic, right? You know, it's the new year, the September new year. And it was just all about how to build a balanced plate 101. And I think that it's the simplicity of getting refocused again on just what are the simple things that I can do now that again, I'm probably back at home or maybe you're back at work or whatever the routine is. So I always find for me, I always want to know the why and I want to know the how. So, you know, building a balanced plate is basically our complete and three rule. It's protein, fiber, and healthy fat. Obviously focus those three things coming from real whole foods. Mm-hmm. And like Amanda was saying, and if trying to eat in season, cause you're going to get it cheaper, it's going to be fresher. It's going to be usually local, um, more delicious, all of that. So that's kind of just the foundational piece. Like we don't have to make our nutrition so complicated. Now, of course, if you want to lose weight and you want to start moving into different areas, then there are different tweaks that we have to make. But if we start there, just even with that foundation and then think, okay, every meal, like, what do I, what am I going to create for lunch or for dinner? And I always recommend to people when they're first learning this is just, that's your only homework is just to, based on what you already normally eat, how can you put those three things together? So even if you're already eating, let's say hamburgers, you know, or even McDonald's, how can we at least do it that it's protein, fiber, and fat, even right. though McDonald's doesn't really have any fiber, but <laughs> you know what I mean, like how can we start to the apple slices? <laughs> yeah. Just starting to train the brain to look for those three things. Then we start to move into, okay, can we now do that in a way that's real whole foods? And then can we do that? Let's think about building snacks. So actually on the email list too, tomorrow I'm sending out 10 different, really awesome complete and three snacks so that you could take them for, you know, whether you are heading out to, you know, for pack for the kids for school, whether you're going to work, things like that. Snacks are usually really hard. Um, but it just is really as simple as thinking in that way and getting into that mindset as you start to ease back into it. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing too, that we want to talk about really quickly is when you're falling back into routine is finding ways to prioritize sleep. We were just talking offline before, before we started recording it about how just last night I slept like over 10 hours. Like I I had like a monster sleep and I've been like sleeping like that. I find lately I've been sleeping with the window open. I think that really helps because it's cooling down at night. And so I think the fresh air really helps me sleep so much better, but in the summer months, it's actually proven that we sleep less in the summer. And I think it has a lot to do with our acidiatic rhythms are being like the sun is up longer, right? The sun is out. We have sunshine for longer hours in the day. And so our nights feel shorter. So we sleep less The sun comes up earlier. And so as we get into fall, that starts to shift and change. And then we start maybe feeling a little more tired earlier in the day. We start getting a little bit more groggy, things like that. Midday, we start feeling a little bit like more exhausted just because we're not having as much sun. So I think the really important thing to do when it comes to prioritizing sleep as well as just getting prioritizing like proper rest, proper rhythms in your body is number one, my recommendation is definitely get outside early in the morning if possible. Going outside for like a morning walk, having your morning coffee outside, whatever it is, but having that sunshine come in and feel the sun and have not only the vitamin D, but also waking up your sedanic rhythm, like allowing your body to recognize that it is morning time, opening up your blinds, opening your curtains, things like that will help you to reestablish that rhythm again. Also having a sleep plan for nighttime, (laughs) having an alarm that is set, that is saying, this is now bedtime, you know, and we talk about this in the Academy, of course, in our, both of our certifications, we talk about like the importance of sleep and different ways that you can incorporate sleep patterns. Um, or getting to sleep easier and things like that. But I think just doing simple things like setting an alarm, setting yourself some boundaries around bedtime, giving yourself the opportunity to have proper sleep is 
so key because especially as we start getting into the winter months, we don't want to go into it feeling even more exhausted, right? Because it does start to feel like when it's cooler, I find everybody just feels a little more tired. And so we want to make sure that we're supporting our body in the right ways and giving it proper rest. And one of the biggest things is just reducing screen time. It is. That can really, really, really help. Yeah. And so same with like, you know, for yourself, for your family members, for anyone, it's really just about, can we reduce screen time? Especially they say up to two hours before bed, just try not to have any screen time. So, which is very, very, very challenging. It is. I really want to implement a no screen time challenge for, um, before the end of the year (laughs) with our chicks. (laughs) It is, it's, it is actually so challenging. And it's also so challenging when you wake up in the morning to not like grab your phone and things like that, but try doing it because it will help your body. Like, and it's interesting how much it shifts and changes your energy by not grabbing your phone in the mornings. Well, it also ties into our next one, which is about wellness, our final about falling back into routine and making sure you do have, you know, a wellness routine that as well, because stress and self-care are so important. Like Mm -hmm. stress is, and I did this on the podcast. I think it was our last podcast was about oxytocin and the love hormone and how to produce more of that because oxytocin balances out cortisol, which is our stress hormone and everyone's stressed, right? Like, so we've got to make sure that we're planning that wellness routine, but, um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. What were we just talking about before this? (laughs) (laughs) We were talking about sleep and like a sleep plan and getting more sleep (laughs) and nighttime routines, screen time and things like that. I want, oh no. Okay. Now I remember. (laughs) So I knew it would come back to me. So the, when we were just talking about the idea of when people grab their phones first things in the morning, this type of wellness plan is that that is a really great thing to kind of do a test for yourself. Don't look at your phones right before bed or first thing in the morning. And reason being too, is that that is when our subconscious is actually one of the most open. Yeah. So whenever we are consuming other people's thoughts and feelings and, you know, their actions before we even have time to settle into our own state, then what happens is we're already letting that into our day and totally affects our moods. Like I know even for me, I don't look at my phone in the morning. I Mm -hmm. wake up, usually I go to the gym or I get my setup. I go have my coffee. I do whatever. And then once I get to work, I open my computer. I actually am not a huge phone person. So that's probably why, but I know from the times that I have done it, if I open my email in bed, or if I look at social media, either I'm into the compare game, I'm reading something negative that's happened on the news and it's already deciding my day for me. And it's mm-hmm. so like, honestly, if you try this for a week, it will change the game because you just will start to be in your own state as opposed to somebody else's. Yeah, no, it's a, it's such an important, it's such an important thing. And it's, but it takes time, right? Like if you're someone who is naturally just been doing that for years, just give yourself some grace, understand that it's not going to feel easy, but once you start doing it, it just becomes part of your daily routine. Right. I think that's one of the biggest things that we all have to realize is that change is hard for everybody. So yeah. do not beat yourself up if you feel like trying to make changes is challenging. It is hard for everybody. It's we're not wired to change. Because mm-hmm. change is requires effort, right? So anytime you're you become aware, hey, this is something I want to change in my life, it is going to feel challenging at first, no matter what. Yeah. Now, there's some things that might not feel as challenging, but it's like It's the same thing, you know, when someone wants to quit smoking, they might try to quit smoking for 15 times, right? And feel like, oh, it's not working. This is so hard. And then finally they're ready to do it. And then it feels easier. It's not that it's the physical part of it's different. It's that change again, it's we're rewiring. We have to be ready to make changes and we have to be willing to go through the discomfort of it. So I just find we all like, I just, for me personally, that makes it easier knowing it's hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, because then it's like, you are not second guessing. Why is it hard? You just no, know. I'm not, thinking okay, something's wrong with me. I'm not like, oh, it's hard for everybody. Why is it hard for me and not hard for everybody else? Yeah. Like knowing it's hard and I'm going to do it anyways. That's the thing that that mindset, that shift in mindset changed everything for me. I'm like, I'm just going to let it be hard. Let it be hard. And I'm still going to do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the last thing I want to mention too, just when it comes to like the wellness side is like creating a plan that works best for you that, but that also doesn't feel like a ton of work. I know that there's a lot of like stuff on social media right now. That's like, 
here's your 75 minute morning routine and you got to do this oh. and this and this and this. It's and like this. my skincare routine. I like, I, I oh my gosh. Routine. I'm like, it's taken me three hours. Like, I don't watch screen time because it takes me three hours to do my skincare routine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. Like, it's just, there's so many layers to things and there's so, so many like gurus or people out in the world that are saying you need to do all of these things when you wake up in the morning. And it's like this crazy routine of morning and like before bed you have like a 20 step process and all this if that works for you amazing like adapt it but create a plan that works for you if someone is telling you to journal and journaling doesn't feel right for you don't do it find the thing that works best for you for like getting your emotions your thoughts everything out if someone is telling you you know that you need to meditate but meditation doesn't feel right for you find a different route I still cannot meditate. I want to meditate so bad. Every time I try to do it, it does not work for me. But that's the thing. It's like, they're like, oh, you just need to try harder. You need to. And I'm like, I have a monkey brain. Like for me, like my brain just is like, oh, think about this. Think about this. Think about this. So for me, yes, meditation, I probably need to go to a guided meditation. But for me as well, it's like, that's why for me, journal, journaling works for me. I get all my mm-hmm. thoughts on the paper and then I can analyze them looking at them. You know what I mean? And then I could see what's really going on like meditation just, I'm like oh but that's just it see and like meditation works really well for me and breathing techniques work yep. really well for me but it's it's finding the thing that you connect to that you feel like you can like create a plan for yourself don't feel like you have to fit into someone else's mold don't feel like you have to do the 20 step process or else your day is ruined right like find the thing that is going to make sense for you i always say it's like create a plan that doesn't feel like it's another thing on your to-do list. It doesn't feel like it's like this whole other thing. It should, yes, it's going to take time. Yes, it's going to take effort. You have to, you have to plan it, but it shouldn't feel like it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole all the time, right? Well, and and the I listen, it might be hard, but it should, it should eventually feel like it's eased. Yeah, like there's a difference between doing something that feels hard, but that doesn't feel, that feels out of alignment, right? right? There's a difference between doing something that's hard because you're like, this is some, a new skill set. This is a new habit I'm building versus something that feels out of alignment. Yes. So like for me, for example, writing is not my strong suit. I am more verbal. So like for me to write a blog post, I'm like, oh my gosh, it takes so much out of me. It's hard and it feels out of alignment with who I am. I'm yeah. better at speaking. You know what I mean? So it just is that interesting like once you start to get to know yourself more, but I was listening to this podcast with Mark Manson who wrote the subtle art of not giving an F. And he was talking about this whole um, idea of like to do with change and stuff and how the thing is though, we all also have to try a lot of things that don't work to find what works for us. And we will never find the thing that works if we do not try the things that don't work. So that's where, you know, it's opening up your, your mindset, even as you're trying all of this, whether it be a wellness routine or fitness or nutrition is that, okay, I am just committed to finding what works. And along that journey, I'm going to find a lot of things that don't work for me. Right. So for me, even to get to where I am right now, I would never be in this job, this body, this mindset, if I did not try every diet under the sun, the cabbage soup diet, the low carb diet, the no carb, the carb power hour diet, the, <laughs> the, the, keto, the, the stop way. the insanity, my favorite diet. <laughs> exactly. If I wouldn't have tried all those things that did not work for me and struggled, if I did not have my eating disorder, if I did not have 50 pounds of extra weight in my body, I had to figure out to get rid of, if I did not, you know, move into teaching fitness and then realize, Hey, this nutrition piece is missing. And so many coaches are missing it. You know what I mean? Like fast forward, I would not be where I am today. So, so many sure. times we want to skip right to the, the answer, but we don't really know what works for us personally and what is our values for us personally if we don't try the things that aren't in alignment with us. So mm-hmm. it's almost like too, if you just embrace this whole, you know, falling back into a routine or starting a new routine or thinking about fitness in a way of just, you know, this is my puzzle I'm trying to put together and I will find all of the pieces as I go. And if something doesn't work, it doesn't mean you don't work. It just means that thing in that context is not for you. I love that. And that for me just has been really, really powerful because I know for me, what works now, and even when I teach this stuff in the Academy too, right. I always teach like, this is the foundational pieces, but everyone is still personalized. Right. And then how do we coach through that side of it? It's no, and you're absolutely right. Like even when I think back of my journey, like 
when I took a keto. <laughs> this is the one that always stands out for me the most because I took a keto thinking that I, I took a bunch of different martial arts programs, but I took a keto. And I remember my coach actually said to me, or like my sensei, they were like, this, this is maybe not for you right now, because I was like, because we would have to like throw people and stuff and like, you'd throw them across the room. And then I'd always run over and be like, are you okay? <laughs> and I'd be like, what's the so like, story? Like they're fine. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I feel weird about it. Like it made me so uncomfortable and that I didn't want to do the actions ever. So he's like, when you're ready to do the actions, then come back. And then we can, not that he wasn't willing to have me as a part of it, but it was, it was really just finding the thing that fit for me. And then it was more of like capoeira that then I went into that also I'm not coordinated enough to be able to try to do dance fighting martial arts. It just wasn't my vibe, but it's like, it's, it's trying them, right? I tried them to see, I was like, I was really curious about them, but I also, I didn't think like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I just was like, this just doesn't, it just doesn't work right now for me. And maybe later I will become an Aikido master. Who knows? But right at that time in my life, it just didn't work. And that's okay too. It's okay to like try things now and say, I'm going to revisit that later. Stay so. tuned for the next episode where, uh, where Amanda <laughs> 45 becomes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will be invited to, to my live matches. <laughs> I don't even think they have those in Aikido, but, um, but anyhow, we just, you know, I really just think it's really about finding things that work for you. And I think I just want to end this episode by saying, you know, take, take small steps, small steps, big actions, right? Small steps, lead yourself back into this. Give yourself the opportunity to be able to get back into routine. Don't feel like you have to rush it and try to find a plan. Think about, can I find a plan that I can easily adapt to yes, fall back into routine, but also that can then become new now my lifestyle so that next summer, next holidays, next to everything, you're not feeling like everything has gone out the window now because this is too hard for me to continue on and I have to restart over and over again. It's good to reflect and look at it and to see what's working, but you don't want to feel like you're always having this start and stop. So um, that is our episode for today. Of course, if you are interested in learning more, um, getting certified as a coach, or even just educating yourself, check out our certifications at fitchicksacademy.com where you can learn more about our fitness and nutrition expert certification, as well as our holistic nutrition health coaching certification programs. So thanks so much everyone for listening to Fit Chicks Chat this week. And we will see you again next week where we're going to be celebrating our birthday. All right. We'll see you then. Thank you so much. Bye.